we will note four main things in Daniel's prayer. But before looking at those prayer points, let us note what else Daniel did besides prayer and how God responded. Look at verse 3 again with me. He says, So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition. So in other words, talking and asking. Then it says, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. Daniel fasted as he prayed. Fasting is an interesting thing. What does it mean to fast? Basically, to fast means to give up something, usually food, so that you can be focused on whatever you're trying to do. Most people fast because they want to lose weight. But biblically speaking, biblically speaking, fasting is always associated with prayer. Fasting is connected with prayer. And so, in other words, the reason to fast and the reason why Daniel was fasting is to help focus on the dependence on God. The reason to fast is to help you focus on your prayers. The reason to fast is to fully be dependent on God alone. You're giving up everything or things that you need and so, while you hunger for those things, you claim the resource from God. You see how that works? Why fasting comes along with prayer, because the reason to fast is to be fully dependent on God through prayer, because true gratification only comes from God. No food, no drink, no alcohol, no drugs, no relationship, no beautiful things that you might go to can compare with the presence of God in our life. So we need to fast in prayer if you, we really want to be close to God. And so I encourage you to fast occasionally. God's speaking to us now, isn't he? <laughs> Lord, bring on the rain. Spring will come. So we are to fast and pray. Now, I think it's also important to note how God responded to Daniel's prayer. Look again at verse 23 with me, how God responded. As soon as you began to pray, an answer was given, which I have come to tell you, for you are highly esteemed. So Daniel fasted and then he prayed, and what happened? God not only responded to Daniel's prayer, he did it immediately. Because you know why? Because Daniel's heart was ready. He was prepared. He was fasting. He was truly opening up his heart to God. And God answered him immediately. But not only that, what do we see? God honored Daniel. Daniel, you didn't have, even have to speak. You are highly esteemed. So God answered Daniel's prayer immediately. And then God honored Daniel. Shouldn't we be praying like Daniel. So our prayers can be answered like that and that we would be honored by God. So let us learn from this prayer. There are basically four parts to Daniel's prayer. Number one, in verse four, we see a, an introduction or a salutation. Daniel acknowledged who God is. God, you are God. There's none beside, be, before you or beside you or there's no one else that can compare to your power and your might. You're an almighty God. You're all-knowing and you are uh, an awesome God. But not only that, you're a loving God. Do you see that introduction and that acknowledgement of who God is? Uh, Daniel, and, and it's similar to the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, Daniel said, God, you are great. You are awesome. You are loving. Before he got into confession. So that number one, uh, first part of Daniel's prayer, salutation in, in, to God. Secondly, we see confession in verses 5 to 6. And verse 5 basically sums it up, doesn't it? We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away. 
from your commands and law. So confession is the second part of his prayer. And in the third part of his prayer, uh, we see in verses 7 to 14, what Daniel actually does, he's, he agrees with God's judgment. He agrees. God, you're a holy, righteous God. We have sinned. And so we understand. You are true to your word. And there will be punishment. There will be judgment. So Daniel agrees with God's judgment. We'll touch on that a little bit later as we apply it to our own lives. And lastly, number four, what did Daniel do? Basically, he asked God. Supplication. Daniel requested for God's mercy. Lord, I, I know that we have sinned and I know you're going to judge us. But I also know you're a God of mercy, so please pour out your mercy. But then we need to note that it was not just mer for mercy's sake, but also for his name's sake. Do you see that in his prayer? That, Lord, we don't want to be ashamed of your name. We are carrying your name. Please help us to honor who you are. Bless your sanctuary. Bless your church. Bless your people that you have called for they're going around claiming your name. Bless them. So that's the fourth thing we, we see. So let's wrap this up in preparation for communion. Daniel and God's chosen people were in the midst of trials. They were slaves. And there were other kingdoms were taking over and the temple is gone. And so Daniel prayed. Today for us, the world is in a crazy mess. We can be depressed with a lot of things going on. And God also tells us as the end of days, as the end of time comes, Christians that bear Jesus Christ's name will be persecuted. So there is a war going on. But we know Jesus is victorious and he will come for us. So what do we need to do? It's part of the full armor of God. You put on the full armor of God and then you put on prayer. So we need to pray. Perhaps you're dealing with some trials right now in your life. Perhaps you're concerned as you get concerned with pe people in other parts of the world, whether it's Japan or the Philippines or India or anywhere else. We need to imitate the prayer of Daniel. So, how do we do this? Number one, it's in your notes. What we need to do is acknowledge who God is. God is an awesome God. And, and, and humble yourself. You are God. You are my creator. I am the created. If you can't get to that point, then you, you need to really seek God. For God reveals himself in many ways. And so we need to humble ourselves. Because if we don't humble ourselves, we're saying we are God. And God is a jealous God. And he will judge. So that's the first thing we need to do. God, you are an awesome, almighty God. But you are a loving God. You are not a God that will just... You, you have all the rights to do whatever you want. But we also know you love people. You created people. And of course, you gave your son, Jesus Christ. So acknowledge who God is. And then number two, we need to confess our sins. Now, many people don't even know what sins are. What are sins? The original Greek word for sin is hamartia. And it means missing the mark. If you are a, uh, a bow and arrow guy, archery, and you're trying to shoot at the target, and you let your arrow try to hit the target, but you miss the target. The ancient Greeks would tell you, you just sinned because you missed the mark. That's what sinning means. Missing the mark. God's target for us is to what? To love him with everything. With our minds, with our hearts, with our energy, with our soul, with our finances. Everything. With our relationships. Everything needs to be brought to God. We miss, don't we, a lot of times. All of us sin. Yes, we're Christians, and we've been forgiven of our sins. We have the, 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 the power of the Holy Spirit, 
but we still have our sinful nature until God changes us. And so there will be times when we will still sin. And besides that, we have people around us who are sinning that impacts us. So we need to confess those sins, our own sins, and the sins of the people around us. All of us sin until we die. Therefore, we are to constantly pray and confess our sins. Now, of course, if you don't want to just confess all the time and claim the power of Jesus, don't sin. <laughs> That's easier said than done, isn't it? But that is the command for us. Do not sin. But we will sin because of our sinfulness still while we're living here on earth. But God gives us a message. Remember 1 John 1, 9? If you confess your sins, God is faithful and will forgive you of your sins as you claim Jesus Christ. So, acknowledge who God is, confess your sins, and then number three, we need to agree with God that there are consequences to sin. Even for us who are Christians, yes, we can claim that all our sins have been placed on the cross, but you know what? God tells us when we sin, there will be consequences. You, can, you will be forgiven as you claim it on the cross, but there are still consequences that will happen. We need to note that. No matter how hard it is, we need to say that God is holy and right, and we sinners deserve the hardships that will come because of our sins. We need to agree with God. Agree with God that there are consequences to sin. And number four, of course, we need to ask for God's blessings because he is a loving, blessing God. And what we need to do, first of all, of course, is to claim the forgiveness of our sins by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross and claim Jesus as our only God, our Lord then what we can do is ask whatever we need in his name. That's what Jesus tells us in the gospel. That's what Daniel did. He asked for the name of God. So, whatever we pray for. So first of all, ask for forgiveness. Claim the, the cross that Jesus did die for your sins and that's been taken care of. There may still be consequences, so you need to ask, Lord, because we see the consequences of what happened to Daniel. And so uh, we need to ask, Lord, please be merciful for your name's sake, for the name of Jesus Christ. So may I suggest this? Whenever you pray, ask this question. Is my prayer request going to honor Jesus Christ? Is it going to honor Jesus Christ? Or am I just praying for my selfish needs? Or are we really saying, Lord, I want to be with you. I want to proclaim your name. I want my whole family to proclaim your name. I would like to see your church proclaim your name. Forgive us. Help us. So that your name would be honored. And you know, uh, uh, a simple thing is when we, because people are going to accuse you. and See, see you're, you're no, 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 no different than anybody else. You're, you're falling into traps and all of this. But you can bring Christ. There's a difference. If you know Jesus Christ, you can go and tell people, but God is a loving God. Jesus died for my sins, and I claim that, and I know because uh, of that, that God accepts me and forgives me and he helps me with my life and be changed and that is my life. For you who don't know Christ, you are just on a downward slope with no hope at all. There's the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. So if you believe and confess that Jesus Christ is the only one who can save you from your sins and that he is truly your God, you are called to participate in communion today. In communion, we are to remember what Jesus did for us about 2,000 years ago. He did it once and for all. He 
went to the cross. So would you take a moment right now to pray about these things? Use these principles, acknowledging God, confess your sins, agree with God of the consequences that you may face, but then ask for God's blessings and ask that Jesus' name would be honored in your life and in those around you. Take a moment to pray right now before we participate in communion.